Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Before we get started, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to see our future videos. This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Uh, we're at episode 129. So, uh, hey, great to have you. Uh, last two shows, we actually did live shows. The first show was with uh, the Duprees and uh, Papa Drew. And then the following week, we did another sh uh, live show. Just out of the blue, just have some fun. Uh, which both episodes, I think it's episode 127 and 128. Our live shows, uh, which if you catch on YouTube, you can actually see the people talking. <clears throat> and uh, But they're also podcasts. And this is uh, obviously 129, which is a regular podcast. And uh, there is a YouTube version of this. Um, and so there. So uh, Sherry and I actually have some uh, interesting stuff going on here. But I got to talk about the top thing here. And I, I got to do it. Is, uh, hey... No, nomads of course you got to join the regime you got to join the cult bob wells is giving out free money darn tootin what a deal kind of like socialism isn't it kind of like sign up for all these things government will take care of you as long as you're all signed up do it our way or hit the highway so apparently this uh non-profit organization he has has got a chunk of change in uh they're just eager to give it out to people that are in need. And, uh, you know, there's, <laughs> I mean, yes, I understand there's folks out there in the nomad community that are uh, uh, living on fumes as far as income. Um, a lot of, and I've talked about this many times in my shows, is uh, there's definitely a need where some people are trying to survive on $500 or $1,000 a month. And just can't do it in today's society as far as apartments or anything like that. So they've chosen the RV or van living kind of lifestyle that allows them to have a roof over their head and still be able to afford a little food and some companionship or friends or whatever and um, necessities of life with that kind of budget. But th now this goes even farther is if you have a emergency or you feel like you're in you're in trouble you need help you can now call the bob wells money foundation <laughs> and uh, uh either uh, it sounds like they're going to try to set up a repay program good luck with that um but um they'll uh, uh help qualify you for some free funds that's been donated to them and just to keep the funds growing they're going to probably start a uh, uh a money campaign so people can contribute can contribute more to this what a great why why improve ourselves we have bob wells to take care of us now so uh wow i i'm tempted i i i really am so uh i uh i i'm torn i'm, I'm and uh i mean it's definitely good hardness behind it i mean there's hardness <laughs> that's a good word i mean uh i'm sure the intent is good but uh is it helping or is it just uh another program out there just to keep people from wanting to improve themselves why improve yourselves when you can get you know free money from certain organizations that say or government things and then also get it from bob and it doesn't even sound like i have to really pay it back so uh gosh um i'm torn i, I love to hear in the comments what people think about it you think it's like it's a good thing uh it's helpful 
it's courteous, it's uh, helping the community, or is it a setback? Is it just another excuse for living in a van and pooping in a bucket? Is it, ex is it a, I don't know, a, a tool to just, well, let's put it this way, it, makes you, it gives you a lot of incentive to be part of the Bob Wells cult, don't you think? And that's kind of what we, you know, when I have other shows, we talk about politics and stuff like that. But that's what the government kind of stuff is going on is socialism, all that. We'll take care of you. And, but, you know, once you get kind of caught up in the regime, <laughs> the cult, if you uh, hurt the cult, they'll probably haunt you. Either, uh, I don't know, haunt you or hurt you. Who knows? So how severe is it if you go against the... So what happens if you hurt the Bob, Bob Wells cult? Do they come after you? Is there like a mob? A Bob Wells mob? Um, who enforces things in that group? Hmm. Well, guys, i love to hear your thoughts of what, the pros and cons of what you think. Maybe it's a great program. Rob, just leave it alone. That's none of your business. <laughs> Or, or is it something we should all be concerned about? Because I think you could expand this. Why couldn't like buy a buy an RV from Camping World and qualify for free thousand dollars every year to go against your repairs? I'm in. Doesn't have to be just Camping World. <laughs> I mean, sounds like they're crooked enough. Why not add that? <laughs> Maybe they have already with their uh, extended warranty programs. But uh, yeah, I think almost all the RV places give us uh, a funds to repair our RVs every year. Or if I have uh, brake issues or I can't make it to a job or a resume, to send my, you know, to uh, apply for a job or something, I just need the money. I could go to Camping World. So how far could this go? Um. I don't know, I just, I, it kind of, you need to look at it even farther. Is like how many organizations do this kind of stuff that keeps us down in a way. We think we're being pushed up, but we're actually kept being kept down. I, uh, I'd even be curious to even ask the homeless community what they think about something like that. They think it's great. Or it's like, ah, oh, it's another thing out there that has uh, uh, a ball and chain to it. And uh, the important thing on this whole thing, guys, is make sure you sign up to be part of the Bob Wells Nomad Cult. You'll be qualified for all kinds of stuff, including the opportunity to buy things from his Amazon shopping cart and all their T-shirts and all that stuff. You're in like Flynn. And now... There's money. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and GBYAY. And we are back. And, uh, yeah, by the way, check out the, the Ford Re Refrigeration uh, organization there. Uh, what a great program. And, and kind of... The, the add on to that so ross uh dupree and his wife uh they started their own business uh pro rv repair and uh you know that's his latest kind of woohoo kind of thing and good for him 
and and there's um, a lot of need for that because uh, because of the population of the RV stuff is growing, 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 growing. To get your um, RV repaired is getting to be a real pain. Um, uh, the big, big RV places, you know, they've got things set up where you can actually bring your, you know, especially if you're living in your RV, uh, you could actually live on there while they're, while they're working on it. That's a cool deal. Uh, but not all RV places do that. And um, having more R mobile RV repair folks uh, is good. And, uh, I actually know some folks that have been doing that here in Arizona <clears throat> and, uh, their, uh, business has been thriving. And, uh, Ross, uh, uh, Dupree is discovering that too. So <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, and there's so many programs out there that even really enhance your, your, your skills, uh, like the Ford refrigeration place where you could get educated to how to understand how those work. And then there's also uh, RV uh, inspection services that you could uh, go through school for and get certified for that. For people who are buying and selling RVs can get appraisals. Um, and uh, also uh, at the same time, uh, get inspected, have their unit inspected before they buy something, um, uh, an RV, uh, to uh, kind of get a fair warning of what they're up against if they're buying a used rig or something. So. RV inspection uh, is sounding like it's a very uh, popular thing, and, and they're kind of networked throughout the state. So um, as people get certified in this, uh, let's say you live in Iowa, uh, you can go to their particular uh, website, find the people that have graduated that are in the state of Iowa that can support RV inspections. And so that's a, that's a good deal. And... Uh, I think they'll set you back about three three hundred and fifty dollars for inspection, but could be worth it if they find something serious before you buy something that's going to cost you a lot of money, and then you're going to have to call Bob Wells and see if you can get some money to fix it. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, I don't know. Uh, why can't people just go RVing? <laughs> can't you just? Go RVing. 90% of you guys are just RVing. That's 10%. It's just insane. Ah. Anyway. <sighs> this is going to be one of those shows. I can tell right now. We know most of you are responsible dog owners and want to keep our parks and recreational areas pristine. Most of us have been stuck with cheap dog waste bags that are inconsistent and cumbersome. That's why we created Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags are larger, deeper, stronger, and leak proof. Most of all, they have handles that make the bag easy to turn inside out and to seal with your dog's business. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags are lemon scented, eco friendly, and come in sheets and now in rolls. Stop getting stuck with cheap waste bags when you can have a Ranger Rob quality premium dog waste bags. Ranger Rob poopy bags are cost effective. They're in Amazon and you can get free shipping right now. Make picking up dog waste easier and comfortable. Ranger Rob poopy bags, making dog waste pickup a little easier. And we are back. Make sure you get yourself some Ranger Rob poopy bags because, yep, I'm getting ready to go get my RV. <laughs> so I need money. And Bob, I don't think I qualify. I'm not part of his cult, so I'm not going to get money there. So, guys, buy some Ranger Rob poopy bags. A legit business <laughs> on Amazon. Go to Amazon, type in Ranger Rob poopy bags, and you'll find our poopy bags are on sheets, where they're just individual sheets. Um, or you can get them on rolls with a great dispense of fabric uh, dispensers. Kind of pretty cool. You'll like them. And uh, high quality, very uh, tough bags with handles, which it makes it really even nicer. Beats those things you get in those cheap RV park dog parks. So anyway, there's what I want to tell you about is um, here's my concern. And I'd love to hear your feedback on some of this stuff, too. I am guilty for my RV sitting in one place for almost going on almost a year. And it just bothers the heck out of me because life just got really crazy. 
we had the Ranger Rob poopy bag business going, and so we got kind of held at our base here to coordinate that and build those things and get the shipments in and getting all set up. So typically we go up to central Oregon where my RV is twice a year, at least to check on it and all that stuff. Now I'm scared to death. I'm going to go up there and luckily, I mean, they have pretty cold winters, but they're not like terribly snowy. It's not a super wet area, so it's not raining a lot, but it is. So, uh, um, it's never good letting your RV sit. I think all of us agree with that. And, uh, you know, who knows what, you know, what things I, uh, I hope. I mean, last time I was worried about it, it was like six months. Uh, I went before I saw my RV and, uh, uh, worried about it and it was just fine. Uh, and it, so my imagination just explodes, but I'm thinking, you know, there's probably a mouse in there having a party. Um, Lord knows how many spiders have got in it. You know, it's sealed up pretty good. And I usually, <laughs> I get there every time I get there. First thing I do is bombard the RV with raid. And then, uh, uh, of course, and then I got it to, uh, because it's been a year, the first thing I'm going to do is put bleach through the water system. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, I, I hate the fact that it said, so... Um, you say, well, Rob, what are you doing that for? Well, Sherry's folks are up there and they're getting up in age a little bit. And, uh, it's nice to know it's there in case we need to get up there and help them out. Um, and then, uh, you know, we have, we just sold our boat. So the boat was on the side of our house. So now we are, we think <laughs> the RV will fit on the side of our house. We're not sure exactly, but we're going to find out but we're not bringing it home on this trip on this trip we're heading up to idaho first and seeing my son uh for a couple of days i am without the rv so we'll be staying in a motel in uh, idaho for about two days then uh, after that we're going to shoot over to central oregon where my rv is to go sh uh, see her folks for a couple of days and we are in, uh i'm actually bought some um lubricants and some stuff for the uh, the treat I mean, i'm gonna give the rv a bath when i'm up there treat the roof with rv uh, uv protectant i bought and uh, uh still leave it there till october you know what's unique about october so everybody has their problems and issues that happen in their families and we have one coming up too is my wife works for a company that sold to another company and uh, her job's being eliminated. And, uh, you know, life happens. And we, you know, at our age, we've dealt with all kinds of stuff in our lives. And um, uh, we'll be fine. And But, you know, she does have a nice severance pay progr um, program. So much better than the Bob Wells program. And uh, uh, for six months. So we are going back up to Central Oregon in October, grabbing the RV and... Uh, uh, giving us the opportunity to uh, check for any problems and all that stuff. But we're going to take it over to the coast in the uh, um, fall, which is actually sometimes a really great time to go, a little colder, and eventually uh, work our way back home with it, um, taking our time and giving Sherry some vacation time, some really good vacation time, a little RV time, a little bit more um, uh, RV channel the Ranger Rob uh, YouTube channel, um, some great stuff, and uh, bring it home. And then uh, we're going to start um, doing a few more uh, southern things because a lot of our videos you'll find are all up in the northwest. And uh, not all of them, but anyway, so we're kind of excited. We've got quite the agenda for the RV, but the first one will be <laughs> you want to watch our videos. What we're up against when we find, get back up to the RV, obviously I got to check the water and the batteries. I got two six volt batteries They're on a trickle charger. I got to check and see if those batteries have not dried up and uh, check the generator. Um, this, just the stress when I first get there just freaks me out. And uh, so, uh, anyway, yeah, I, I'd be curious in the comments if, I, uh, if you've had to make your RV sit in one space for a long period of time, what kind of problems you might have had and things like that. 
Um, I'm not recommending that what I did is what I wanted to do. It just life, life happens. And, uh, um, well, you know, if something breaks on or if something's wrong, maybe I can get a loan from Bob Wells and, um, or some free money you know, for hardship. Uh, I wish Camping World would have set up something like that. Um, that'd be awesome. But I'll take responsibility for my own stuff and uh, pay for it myself, I guess. That's kind of how it works for most people, isn't it? Just saying. So anyway, that's the agenda. Uh, Sherry and I will be leaving pretty soon. Actually, by the time you hear this show, we've actually probably be home already. Uh, so we do that kind of on purpose because it's not a good idea to tell people where we're at right on the button. Uh, it, <laughs> it gets weird sometimes. <laughs> it's getting kind of weird. <laughs> and step away from the lasers. Anyway, so... um. Uh, that's the scoop. So I'm excited to see our RV again, check it out, do some work on it. I'm going to be reporting to you guys what kind of things we found and warnings of what not to do. <laughs> Hopefully everything's I did right. I winterized correctly. I taped up all the, anything that, um, all the openings on the RV is taped up, keep the critters out, stuff like that. Uh, somehow a mouse still gets in there no matter what I've done in there to do all the little tricks of sealing all the holes. They're just sneaky little buggers. But uh, uh, we also make sure we don't leave any food out or anything like that. So it'll be an inter uh, interesting adventure when we get back to the RV to see uh, um, uh, how well we wrapped it up for the year. So anyway, st stay tuned for that stuff. So <laughs> watch our videos because it's going to get interesting. Well, you know, one of the things that's been kind of amazing before I uh, actually head for this trip, go up to Central Oregon, is how much crap I got to do. Um, you, just be, you know, I guess this is where life gets really complicated and some people say, oh, join the RV Freedom, you don't have all this. And I kind of doubt it. It still happens. So as it gets a little bit more complicated, for example, obviously you, you hear us always talking about the Range Round poopy bags. Well... Amazon takes care of a lot of our orders and stuff like that, but we have other platforms where we sell our part products. So guess what? When I go on a trip, I've got to take uh, Ranger Rob poopy bags with me, not to only you know show them off and anytime I'm at a retail store or something like that, I can talk to the owners and see if they'll carry our products. Um, but if somebody orders from one of our other shopping carts, I have to ship them from wherever I'm at. So I've got to keep a a supply of RV um, <laughs> of uh, Ranger Rob poopy bags with me just for that, and then of course I was you know I told you I bought all these lubricants and things like that for the RV, and uh, so I've got those with me, and then uh, uh, I also like to keep like a weapon with us and stuff like that, but not always when we're traveling, but. Uh, so um, when we meet our son, uh, he likes to shoot up there in Idaho. So we bring a little bit of a arsenal up with us to go uh, enjoy some shooting time with him. And uh, plus we got a new Ruger I wanted to uh, show off to him and let him play with it. And uh, so we got that we're carrying up along with the dog and all her stuff. She eats a can of wet dog food every day. So there's 10 cans of food just for her and a bag of food. And water, um, and I hate it because it's so hot right now. It's going to be really hot till we get to Idaho. So uh, Cinder, we have to be careful with. Can't leave her in the car for anything like that. So it's a pretty much uh, two days of eating nothing but McDonald's, which Cinder loves because she gets French fries. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not easy. <laughs> Along with uh, uh, you know just. Uh, you know, when you're dealing with your kids, there's always stuff in the garage. You go, I should give this to my kid. So my truck's going to be loaded with things I'm going to give to my son. <laughs> and by the way, it's a secret. That's one way to clean out our garage. You know those things you want to get rid of and you go, oh, I think the kids might want these. And so uh, you can't get rid of them. So your garage has still got so much crap in it. You don't know what to do with them all. So yeah, um, 
this is my perfect opportunity to like <laughs> to clean out the garage a little bit, give it to my son. So uh, yeah, it's um, preparing for a trip nowadays seems harder, um, just because life seems. Uh, not to mention the cameras, by the way. So uh, our go-to camera is constantly the GoPro. But for our more nicer pictures and stuff like that, uh, we take uh, the G40 Canon. And uh, so we'll be toting those around. So uh, along with, you know, cell phones and all that stuff. And so all the electronics, just to support all the electronics, is crazy. Along with, got to take a laptop with me because obviously I have electronic business. And, and you guys are writing to us and comments and we want to reply back. Um, you know, I... I mean, I got a giant truck, but by the time I get all this stuff in the truck, I, I wish I had a bigger truck. <laughs> so, yeah, it gets pretty complicated. Um, that's okay, though. That's just how life is. But, you know, it's, this is crazy. I've noticed our lifestyle, even when we're in an RV, uh, same thing. We're getting ready to do road trips and stuff like that. Loading up the car, loading up the dog, loading up the equipment, the cameras, the whole works. Um you know, life, life is life. And, uh, um, <laughs> I'm not complaining. Just telling you how crazy it is right now. I'm, we're towards the last day of getting ready to head out the door here. And it's like, oh, you almost stress out just to go on vacation. That's wrong. <laughs> well, you know, I, I gotta tell you, meeting, um, I've talked, well, he's been on my show a couple of times now, Papa Drew. I like to take the time to say, well, it's so nice to just run into somebody that uh, just is charming. That's all I can say. Um, a lot of times when we get people who contact us or work with us on RV Talk Radio, it's more of some, they want, they want something. And uh, um, I don't really think when Papa Drew first kind of met us, didn't actually realize we had the RV talk radio stuff, and now he's kind of found our gold mine. But um, I showed it to him; he wasn't trying to take it, and that's what we get a lot here in RV talk radio. Um, usually, people have uh, intentions of trying to grow their channels and stuff like that, and he's turned out to be just a darn right nice guy. And and it was really cute because we both just love our dogs to death. He's got a great Dane. So we, uh, I said, well, I'll shoot you over a, a box of uh, Range Rob poopy bags if you do a review for me. He's like, I'd be glad to because, uh, you know, a great Dane can uh, drop quite the load. And uh, so I said, hey, Range Rob poopy bags would easily take care of that. So he just made me a little video. <laughs> it was really cute. Um, I, I'm going to play it. Uh, uh, no, I'm not. I, I guess I shouldn't. Um, make sure you go to Papa Drew's um, RV group and you'll see the video he made for us. So cute. Um, it's very short, less than a minute, and uh, uh, really shows you what people are up against with poopy bags. Like sometimes you just, you're stuck with these things. You go, yeah, I'm supposed to pick that up with this thing, but not with uh, Ranger Rob poopy bags. You'll be so satisfied. Uh, taking care of the business, turning it inside out, and easily tying it up with the handles. And if you have to carry it for a distance to get it to a garbage, you got the handles. It makes it so nice. Trying to take a tubular kind of bag and tie a knot into it is not fun at all. It's bad enough that you got to pick up, right? So, anyway, uh, I want to thank Papa Drew and I uh, and and for. Uh, all his good words and uh, doing some shows with us on RV Talk Radio. I plan to have him on more. And um, uh, he uh, is falling in love with a couple other channels he loves that we'll try to do some um, RV channel reviews uh, based on some of his recommendations. Uh, just a good guy. And I, I recommend you go check out his channel. Um, he also has a drone, so he uh, appears to be pretty good with a drone. I uh, did one, I watched one of his shows where he's on the coast of uh, California and uh, he just took his drone parallel along the beach there and looking at all the people camping and uh, d did a really good job with it, really good photography. So uh, yeah, check him out, Papa Drew, Papa Drew. Yeah, um, I'm glad I met him and I'm glad you'll be glad, um, I know you'll be glad you met him too. So check out his stuff. 
So uh, changing the subject a little bit, I was going to tell you, you know, getting ready to hit the road here. So obviously, uh, I always want to get my truck up to snuff. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably make you faint here for a minute. Have you ever got? Do you ever go to Jiffy, Jiffy Lube or anything equivalent to that? So when you take a diesel like mine, a 2002 Ford uh, uh, 350 one ton uh, dually with uh, a 7.3 liter engine in it yeah it's a nice engine uh you're talking about 15 quarts of oil so just an oil alone i'm always my bill at jiffy lube is always over 200 dollars. but you know it's been a while so i had and i use synthetic oil so that makes the pain even worse then i said okay go ahead and change my air filter and um the other thing is I actually been leaking diesel. And so um, many years ago, I had the same problem. It turned out to be my fuel filter. And uh, so in 2009, I had that switch and I fixed it. And then last year I had a, a leak. It turned out to be actually a line that would kind of vibrated and created a hole in a kind of a aluminum line type thing. Or Anyway, so they fixed that. Well, I started getting a leak again. Well, anyway, at Jiffy Lube, the guy goes, you know, we do uh, fuel filters. I'm going, well, I'm kind of thinking I'm getting a, a leak. Maybe I'm leaking around there again. So luckily the fuel filter for uh, uh, the 7.3 is right on top. <clears throat> and so we got under there with a the light. And, he, um, and by golly, yep, it was uh, definitely fuel leaking out of it. So I changed that out. So that was another $99. So I left Jiffy Lube. This is the highest amount of money I've ever spent at a Jiffy Lube. Three, and I, I had to apply a coupon to it. Didn't help that much. $340. <laughs> Ow. Of course, they're all, I'm driving out. They're all going, woohoo, we just took care of payroll today. So yeah, that hurt. So uh, yeah, um, keeping up trucks and RVs is not cheap. And uh, um I like to use good stuff in my truck, but I've got 200 and almost 230,000 miles on my truck and it drives like it's new. So you got to love a good diesel. And those 7.3s are awesome. And so I, I give it good oil and that, that truck served me so well. Um, it's a two wheel drive, not a four wheel drive. And, uh, actually gives me 5,000 more pounds of, uh, uh, towing capacity than a four-wheel drive. I know it sounds weird, but it's true. Look it up. So anyway, guys, um, yeah, Jiffy Lube, I'd love to hear what's the most that you've ever spent <laughs> having an oil change. It turns out you got between uh, air filters and fuel filters and windshield wipers and all that stuff, and, you know, they nickel and dime you. Have you beaten my record of $340? <laughs> at Jiffy Lube. <laughs> I think Henry's Oil Can, that's another one. There's some other ones out there, but I'd love to hear what's the highest amount you spent and how were you shocked? <laughs> I'd love to hear from you. Well, I was uh, listening to or watching uh, Little House on the Road. Uh, I believe that guy's name is Rob also. And uh, uh, he was reporting on a couple in uh, up in Canada that were nomads that actually got murdered, and uh, which brought up the conversation once again about RV safety. So, uh, um, I know everybody wants to hear all the, um, you know, they keep saying we're uh, Debbie Downer, but I I can't tell you enough from every time we love RVing, but. Uh, heads up that's all i was saying and even if it was 10 years ago or 20 years ago i'd still say heads up put your uh, head on a swivel you might say and keep your eyes open uh, be aware of your surroundings and and understand that you know the uh and what brings this up is every other video i watch is hey where i found free camping free camping this obsession with free camping is uh, people are getting wise. The, the bad people are getting wise to you people. 
And the more that do it, the more that a couple of people are going to start figuring out, hey, these guys are out in the Thule's. I'll just watch the rig for a while, wait till they leave, and uh, <laughs> I'm in like Flynn, and they're going to. Uh, but uh, even nastier people out there are, are thinking of even more evil stuff. And uh, gosh, guys, it's kind of scary. And so uh, safety, uh, I know some people are putting cameras in. I'm not saying that that will help with anything. Or uh, motion lights, can't say that necessarily would help. Uh, definitely would be a, a hesitation. Uh, but, you know, when you're out there by yourself and you... Um, nomading and and you love those peace and quiet but that peace and quiet could be the worst enemy um days are changed things are changing and i don't say i like it um but being aware of your surroundings and uh even packing a um, weapon uh pro uh, good bad or indifferent uh something to consider and learn how to use that thing and uh problem with that also is you got to realize what state you're in and what you can and can't do with a concealed weapon uh i don't know how many times i've heard that um victims become the criminals it's terrible so uh i don't know it just worries me that um and that's what we keep warning out here guys is think about at least being groups and 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 if you're even if you're no batting out in the boonies on BLM land is like, why don't you make sure that maybe there's one or two other RVers out there and then go meet them, go meet them. And just say, hey, I came over to say hi. I just wanted to see who you are, who I am. And so uh, I'll kind of watch your stuff. You watch my stuff. Um, most nomads are pretty uh, uh, open to that kind of stuff. And uh, and and, not, not, and I shouldn't just say nomads, just RVers that it, are getting off the grid for a day or two. Um, but, you know, something to say about RV parks where, yes, there's a lot of craziness and a lot of goofy people in these places. There's a lot of goofy people everywhere. Um, but uh, there is a little bit of law and order, a little bit in the RV parks as opposed to um, these uh, free camping places. Please be careful. That's really what I'm saying. And a lot of the other channels are saying the same thing. Be careful. And uh, you're not necessarily hearing the stories you need to know of what's happening out there. Because, you know, the RV channels, for some reason they feel this obligation of trying to sell the lifestyle to you. And uh, uh, your normal RVers, the 90% you never hear from, there's no selling to them. They're just doing what they're doing. And uh, things are going just fine for them. But... Uh, uh, you know, even taking it farther, even some of the people down are doing the Mexico retirement kind of stuff because so many people are doing it now. Now they're becoming victims a little bit of having issues with robberies and, and stuff like that. So uh, uh, not necessarily uh, uh, the same stuff we have is uh, older folks, especially if we're older, um, we're uh, easily to uh, um, a lot easier to overwhelm with overpower us um, as younger folks, and so uh, uh, history replays itself. <laughs> we should never forget that. And be careful out there. That's all I'm saying, guys. Well, it's time to change the segment here to something different. It's time for. Positive Time with Rob on RV Talk Radio. And what do I mean by that? Well, there's all kinds of stuff always going on. Uh, there's shootings going on. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on, not just in the United States, all over the world. There's a lot of stuff going on. And so um, I thought we'd go ahead and point out some of the really nice things going on in the RV world that we should know about. Now, you hear me teasing about the Bob Wells stuff, and I know, and you know, we all know that he's, it's not 100% probably just charity, but, um, you know, uh, his uh, intent is good. 
uh, trying to create a nomadic uh, community for people that are having a hard time and need a way to live, alternative way to live. We'll leave it at that. And that's a good thing. Along with another sh- channel I watch called Invisible People, he talks uh, to about the homeless a lot and uh, uh, shows a lot of positive things along with the negative, but um, of uh, what these homeless people are going through yet, showing their, their hope, and that's a, that's a good thing. And then some of these other RV channels I tease about and stuff, all in all, their uh, intents are good. Um, some of them are just telling their story, and and some of them are great stories, and they share some of the times their uh, uh, challenges, and we get to share that with them, and that's great. And then uh, there's some that just do like wonderful photography, showing us where they're at, knowing that maybe we will never have a chance to travel like they do. And uh, uh, so they show uh, their travels and do great photography to kind of make it feel like you're with them on their travels. And uh, nothing's better at middle of the afternoon at lunchtime where you can turn on a video, watch Nomadic Fanatic or something and enjoy wherever he's at at the time. And and that's good stuff. And I guess the, the message I want to put across is there's a lot of bad stuff going on and it could be a lot more depending on what you understand about your faith and things like that of uh, what could be happening in the future. And, and, and the only thing I could say is uh, Sherry and I actually are very positive, happy people. You, <laughs> I know you listen to this show, you go, Rob's always ranting. But no, Rob's just uh, wants everybody to have happiness and wants everybody to be safe and enjoy what they're, they're doing in RV land. But, uh, you know, there's shootings going on and there's uh, economic problems out in different places. And there could be earthquakes and hurricanes and tornadoes and terrible, terrible things. And we talk about prepping and, and being prepared and things like that and that's part of what the Ranger Rob channel is all about is um, uh, just sharing life um, and what people are going through and it isn't always I mean living for the now is not always the best way to go you should live for the now but also be aware of the future and so being prepared and things like that is important um, yes we could be in a Walmart and someone could start shooting and things like that. But the overall thing is, is I'm going to throw just a smidgen of faith to you that if you're a good people and you've lived a good life, and of course, if you uh, believe in your faith, and in my case, my faith requires me to ask for forgiveness and uh, repent and, and, and believe in, in my uh, and, and God and Jesus, and, and, and I'll just leave it at that. And knowing that, and I feel sorry for those that don't have faith, knowing that if some reason it ended today, that it's only the beginning. This this trip we're on of, uh, of, of humanity is actually short-lived. And all they ask is, is we're good people, that we have faith, and try to live a good life, and we'll be rewarded. And if that brings anybody comfort uh, at all, then great. And I don't want to go too far into that because people just turn a channel and they don't want to hear it. But um, it really comes down to just enjoy life. Don't be selfish, though. Whatever you are doing, for example, Bob Wells, what he's doing, he's making the best of it and creating charity type things and and uh, doing a positive thing along with the person that does uh, invisible people. Shows the good and bad about homeless people, but his overall intent is to help those people. And the RVing community is the same way. Generally speaking, they're uh, out there to tell the story, show you the pros and cons of each thing that they do and the different types of RVing they do, whether it's motorhomes or fifth wheels or vans. 
and uh, generally their intent is good. And uh, those are definitely brownie points for when we get our second chance. We'll just put it that way. And that's the message I'm sending here is, is uh, we're all trying to help each other. And in this particular channel, we were talking about the RV life. And really, um, uh, everybody's doing it a little different. We kind of uh, uh, put emphasis on the RV lifestyle and RV living and the things, just the pros and cons of what you should know about and try to introduce to you to people in channels that you may want to watch in the future. And we've run into a lot of really good people. And we've seen some pretty insane ones too. <laughs> Even their intents are pretty good too, <laughs> but it's definitely some insane ones out there. So, uh, uh, yeah, live life to the fullest. Try to understand your faith if you have any. If you're not sure what your faith is, maybe you should find out. Um, and just realize that this particular life is short and sweet. And you need to make the best out of it. But the next one is eternity. And it will be good. So don't let all the negative out there and all the sad news out there get under your skin. And yes, some of that evil, some of that terrible thing could happen to you or I. But knowing that there's a buffer <laughs> uh, is... Pretty satisfying. And uh, um, if you don't have that buffer, it's I don't know how you could live with such emptiness. But uh, if you're curious about it, go find out. There's easy ways. Use audio books, things like that. Learn more about w what your faith is all about, and you'll feel better. Yes, there's a lot of horrible stories out there and there's a lot of things faith-related and stuff like that. The overall story is live a good life, have faith. You're, you get second chances. You just have to confess to it and realize that this isn't, this isn't it. This is only the beginning. So make the best of your life and be a good person. And so... Uh, the big part, I guess, on this show today is, uh, uh, yes, I've teased a little bit and uh, have concerns a little bit when it comes to some of the things people are doing out there in the RV world. Um, but generally speaking, they think or are doing, and, and maybe even being mistaken, um, doing what they think is good and that should be all right with all of us. Might be twisted a little bit sometimes, but um, and then sometimes it looks like there's people out there doing good things that really have different intent, and and we try to point that out that you know some of these RV channels um, they're doing the shows because they're clickbaiting you and they're making money from it, and and do you blame them? I mean, obviously. Um, even with us, we, you know, we're always talking about the Ranger Rob poopy bags and, and we have uh, uh, Amazon products we'll talk about or, or things like that. And um, it helps us and we love donations and we have, um, you can get RV talk radio cups and hats if you wanted to. Uh, just go to our Facebook channel and you'll see them listed in there somewhere. So it always is helpful, always makes things a little less painful when we're paying for you know, $80 music licenses and, and software and things like that. So it kind of, you know, takes it a little bit, but we do it out because, you know, uh, the other thing I was going to tell you about it is I need to remind you that you can catch RV talk radio on good talk radio, which is a 24 seven internet radio station that plays worldwide. And we're on Spotify and our iHeartRadio radio and a whole bunch of other stuff. And, uh, um, we do what we do out of the goodness of our heart. Now, um, to run an internet radio station costs hundreds of dollars. 
no, we're not being paid and no, we're not selling commercials really. I mean, we have people that do donate stuff to it, but I wanted to create a platform for my faith uh, of shows and syndications that had a voice to give them one more platform to reach out to the world. And so that's what I do in the background to try to help the community is I give them the platform along with other shows. And it doesn't have to be all faith based, but um, you'll find good talk radio to be some really good shows, but you also find a lot of them would be Christian based. Um, and are they really uh, faith fluffy kind of shows? No, 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 no. But their base is, is based on conservatism in a sense and faith. Um, but there's liberalism in there too. So yeah. Um, all of us have or should try our best to help others, whether it's a one individual or a community or family. Um, there's some wonderful stories out there. Uh, people taking care of their, their, uh, parents, at, um, that have aged a lot or um, having um, health issues in the family, uh, setting up uh, funds for nomad people. That's a good thing. Um, teaching people the ins and outs of understanding uh, what, what it costs to be an RVer and um, telling their stories. Uh, asking people how they would deal with scenarios that are good, bad, or indifferent. Um, make you think things through. So if you get yourself under the same situation, maybe your decision will be better than what you would have done if you hadn't seen some of these shows. Yeah. So yeah, my little serious note on the end there is, yeah, we tease and we point out things and we, uh, um, make fun of things sometimes. But uh, all in all, it's really in the benefit of giving you an open mind to look at both sides of it. And you can see on this show, we started out with like bombarding you about the free money. But towards the end, we can point out the goodness of it too. To me, that's a true debate and that's an open mind. To be able to talk about subjects, debate about them, hear both sides of the scenario at the end of the conversation you shake hands and go huh you gave me something to think about or i'm not going to change my mind or maybe i will change my mind maybe i'll look at this differently and that's it and be happy with that and life used to be more like that in the past and it's getting more decide um split um people are getting offended very easily and they're using escape goes like racism and things like that and um we've forgotten that we can talk about things and have shows like this and talk about the pros and cons and stuff but at the same time especially certain hosts and stuff like that shit should be able to talk to both sides of uh of a subject and stay calm and uh that doesn't always happen, and uh, that's. Uh, but generally speaking, um, uh, I, I do want to uh, remind you. By the way, is if you have a story, especially on uh, RV related with this show, uh, if you have a channel, if you have a Facebook, um, something that you're documenting for RVing, and would like to con be considered for interview, we may not get to you right away. But uh, um, the big part is um, telling us what you want to do, why you want to do it. Um, be honest with us. Maybe you're trying to build up your channel numbers. Nothing wrong with that. We're always trying to build up our channel numbers. We're slightly modifying our stuff to get it more consistent. You probably start noticing everything's starting to have a Ranger Rob theme to it. And I couldn't do that till I actually owned the trademark. And so... Now you kind of see it all coming together where the, the storyline might be a little more consistent and a little bit more uh, under the same brand. And uh, it's taken a while, 
and life has changed. You know, we uh, don't travel as much. So now we have the opportunity to interview others that are traveling. We're actually in your shoes more than before, because before we were the travelers. And uh, now we're the outsiders looking in. And, uh, but we're kind of the travelers too. <laughs> anyway, guys, the big story out there. Be good to one another. Share your stories. Don't be afraid to bring up sensitive things. Show at the end that you're open on both sides. You're not just set in your ways. And there is two sides to all the stories, typically speaking. And uh, be honest. And that's what we try to do here on RV Talk Radio. So I want to thank you so much for the support and to be uh, listening to RV Talk Radio. And please remember, you can listen to RV Talk Radio at different times. If you're not listening to the podcast, you can also uh, see us on YouTube and you can also catch us on Good Talk Radio. And understand all those platforms are designed to help other groups and other syndications and other podcasts and other channels to expand their reach. That's our donation to the community. And that's why you'll see us try to sell poopy bags. And that's why you'll see us try to sell cups and, and maybe um, uh, put a, a Amazon link out there just to take the sting away a little bit. And so, yeah. <laughs> be good to each other, guys. Buy yourself an RV. Be safe and enjoy life. Bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.